Hi, this is Mrs. Young, and today we're going to go over um, the lesson that you read and took notes on yesterday, Circles in the Coordinate Plane. So I will be going over um, your homework, which was to read and take notes in this video, and also kind of just going over the lesson in general. I'm going to have you start with a bell ringer here. I want you to use the distance formula to find the distance between the two points that you're given. Um, you can round it to the nearest tenth and then come up with your three answers. So go ahead and pause the video right now and calculate the distance for each of these three problems. I know I'd mentioned way back in the beginning of the year, distance formula is very important, so make sure that you know it. Um, look it up if you need to, but it's just a formula that comes back time and time again. Um, again, the distance between two points, it's x2 minus x1, the quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1, the quantity squared. And you can see I actually worked out the first one for you. I plugged in the values. When you square something, even if it's negative, it should become positive. Um, the square root of 97 was about 9.8. The second one, you should have 5, exactly. And then the third one, you should have 7.1. Going to your notes, so again, pull out your spiral and have out the notes that you took for homework yesterday. Um, this uh, the whole lesson is all about the equation of a circle. The equation of a circle is based on the distance formula and the fact that all points on a circle are equidistant from the center. So this radius or radii, right, the distance from the center to the edge of a circle is the same for all points on the circle. So if we take our center point and we call it HK and plug it in as um, our second ordered pair X1, Y1 in the distance formula, that's where the equation of the circle comes from. Notice that um, they move the square root over to the other side and they say r squared is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. This should be in your notes from yesterday. It is a really important formula for circles. It's the equation of a circle. Again, hk represents your center point, and then notice that the radius is squared. It's very similar to, or might look familiar to you, it's kind of like the uh, standard form of a linear equation, right? ax plus by equals c, right? So it's kind of similar to that. Looking at your, um, check it out, number one, one a, if we have a center point of zero, negative three, and a radius of eight, when I plug in my values, I have x minus zero squared, plus y minus a negative 3 squared equals 8 squared. Again, the two negatives cancel out and become positive, or plus a positive. 8 squared is 64. And normally we do drop off um, any zeros out of that equation. So there's your equation of that first circle. The second one, 1b, the difference here is that they gave us a point and the center point, but not the actual radius. But we know that we can use our distance formula to find the radius of um, or the distance between the two points, which would give us our radius. So when I plug these into my distance formula, I get a radius of 4. So your equation should be x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1. y minus a negative 1 is y plus 1 squared equals your radius, which is 4 squared, 16. So there's how we come up with the equation of a circle. What gets a little bit more challenging here is when we actually have to graph it. So there was an example there um, in the packet where they um, take an equation, an equation of a circle, and they want you to make a table of values. Now, hopefully, you can tell right away, again, think of the standard form of the equation of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Um, we can tell right away that there are no um, h and k values. So we know that our center of this circle is at the origin, right? We know the square root of 25 is 5, so we know the radius is 5. So when I'm graphing a circle, that's what I usually start with. I look at the equation, figure out what my center is. I can plot the center. Here it's the origin. And then my radius is um, the square root of that value on the other side, so it's 5. So from the center, I can count 5 squares to the right, um, 5 squares to the left, squares, 5 squares up, and 5 squares down. So there's my radius or radii. So I can get those corner points, and then I want to get some other points on my circle. Now, this isn't always going to happen where it's going to be nice whole numbers like this, but here as an example, if I plugged in, let's say that we plugged in 3 
for x, if I plug in 3 here, 3 squared is 9, so I have 9 plus y squared equals 25. Subtract the 9 over, and then when I take the square root of that, I get y is plus or minus 16. Here we do want to keep the positive, sorry, plus or minus 4. We do want to keep both the positive and negative values because you actually have two points here. You have 3, 4, and then 3, negative 4. So I can go to the right 3 and up 4 or to the right 3 and down 4. Similarly, we know that there's a lot of symmetry involved in a circle, so I could also go to the left 3 and up 4, or to the left 3 and down 4. And then once you go ahead and connect your points, you have this nice circle. So sometimes making the table of values is what's going to be a little bit challenging for us. So in your check it out number 2, when you're graphing the circle in 2a, Again, when I look at this, the first thing I notice is that the center is at 0, 0, or the origin, right, because there's no h or k values. And I know that the radius is the square root of 9, that's 3. So I can start by plotting the center of my circle. I can go 3 squares to the right, 3 squares to the left, 3 squares up, and 3 squares down. I'd also like you to come up with um, at least one other point on your circle. So I'm not sure, again, look at your circle. It wouldn't make sense to plug in something like 4 or 5 because that's outside of my circle. So you have to put some thought into what number you're going to plug in for x. If I plugged in, let's say that I plugged in 1 for x into this equation. Again, we can do the math. 1 squared plus y squared equals 9. 1 squared is 1. When I subtract it, I get y squared is equal to 8. And then so the square root of 8, I'm going to get y is equal to about 2.2. That's where that value came from in my table. So I can go to the right one and up, sorry, 2.8, my bad. It's 2.8. So when I go to the right one and up 2.8, I can go to the right one and down 2.8. But notice the symmetry. I mean, if you want to go ahead and plug in negative 1, you know you're going to get the same value. So I don't always make you plug in those other values because we know that a circle has some symmetry here. We know that we would have a point on this side and then a point down here. And then I can go ahead and connect to form my circle. In 2b, again, this one is definitely more challenging. My center is at 3, negative 2. I know that my radius is the square root of 4, that's 2. So when I start graphing this, I plot my center. And then I plot two points to the right, left, up, and down. And for me, I do want one other point that you can use symmetry to plot in four spots. So you want to come up with at least one other point on your graph. So when we do the math here, think about what you want to plug in for x. You could plug in, you wouldn't plug in 0 because that's not going to be on your circle, right? You want to plug in either 2 or 4, right? Because that will give you some points on your graph besides the points that you've already plotted. So if I plug in 2, here's the math of this. When I plug in 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, but negative 1 squared is positive 1. I subtract the 1 over. And then when I take the square root of this, right here I'm taking the square root of both sides, right? So I get y plus 2 equals plus or minus 1.73. So that's really two different equations. It's y plus 2 equals 1.73, or it's y plus 2 equals negative 1.73. So because I have the positive or negative, and then when I subtract 2 from both sides, I get two very different or unique values. So when I plug in 2, I'm either going to get negative 0.26 or negative 3.73. Again, when I graph those, go to the right 2 and down 0.26. That's like a down about a quarter of the way on that square. And then down 3 and 3 fourths of the way, right? So I go down 1, 2, 3, and 3 fourths. So that's how I get this other point. Again, use the symmetry that you know about circles to come up with these other points, and then you can go ahead and connect them and get your circle. So for me, when you're graphing a circle, I want you to first find your center point, find your radius, that'll give you the four outside points, and then I want you to plug in something else for x to give you two other points and then use symmetry to plot the final two there. So you're, when you're all done, you should have around your circle eight points total. You can do more points if you'd like, if you'd prefer, but I want a minimum of eight points plotted on your circle. So um, let's go through and um, do a, I want to do a few examples with you. Here's one, x squared plus y squared equals 16. 
So in this equation, I know right away that my center is the origin, 0, 0. There's no h and k. I know my radius is 4. So I'm going to start by plotting my center. My radius is 4, so I'm going to go 4 squares to the right, 4 squares to the left. Oh, I can't even count there. I want to go 4 squares up and then 4 squares down. And finally, I want another point on our circle. I'm going to make like a little table of values. What could I plug in? Well, I, I'm not going to plug in 0 because I've already got a point there. I could plug in 1, 2, 3, or negative 1, negative 2, or negative 3 to get some other points on my circle. For me, it's always easier to plug in a positive number as opposed to a negative number. So I'm maybe I'll just plug in, I don't know, maybe I'm going to plug in 1. So as I plug 1 into this equation, 1 squared plus y squared equals 16. 1 squared is 1. Subtract it over. Take the square root of both sides. So I get y is approximately equal to plus or minus, what's the square root of 15? Oh, I wrote it down somewhere. So I came up with plus or minus 3.87. So as I graph that, right, I can go to the right one and up 3.87. I can go down 3.87. Again, because of symmetry, I can even plot points on the other side. Maybe you'd want to plot some other points. Maybe um, you didn't choose one. Maybe someone else chose two. If you plugged two into the equation, 2 squared plus y squared equals 16. 2 squared is 4. Subtract it over and we get 12 take the square root of both sides, and then y is about plus or minus 3.5. So again, slightly different value. When I go to graph this, again, go to the right two and up three and a half, down three and a half. And again, because of symmetry, there's points on the other side exactly in the same spot. Maybe someone else plugged in 3. I don't know. Maybe that was your choice. You plugged in 3. If we plug in 3, 3 squared plus y squared equals 16. 3 squared is 9. So when I subtract that, I get 7. When I take the square root of 7, um, I think I came up with about plus or minus 2.6. Again, when I graph this to the right 3 up 2.6, a little bit more than halfway, down 2.6, and again, your mirror image points are on the other side. The more points you plot, the more you can see that circle shape, right? So we can see the shape of our circle. So then we go ahead and connect and we have that circle. Again, for me, you don't have to do this many points. Like I said, I need eight points total. So the four that you get on your radius plus one other point that you can use the symmetry to plot in four spots, right? So be careful. Let's try another one. Again, this is easier when your center is the origin. It becomes more challenging to graph when your center is not the origin. Oh, there's the circle. Yeah, okay. So we're going to try one more. So again, start by identifying what your center is. Here my center is 3, negative 4. And then what's your radius? Here it's 3. So I can go ahead and start by plotting the center of my circle at 3, negative 4. My radius, so I'm going to go to the right 3, left 3, up 3, and down 3. So that's kind of the beginning of my circle. Then I have to come up with another value, make a table of values. What could I plug in for x? Well, I either want to plug in 1 or 2, not 3, 4 or 5. For me, it's always easier to pick a smaller number as opposed to a larger number. So let's say that I'm going to plug in, let's say 1. Right, let's just plug in 1. I plug in 1 into this equation. 1 minus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 9. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So I have 4 plus y plus 4 squared equals 9. Subtract the 4 over. y plus 4 squared equals 5. Again, trying to solve this for y. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get y plus 4 equals plus or minus. Um, again, the square root of 5 is about 2.2-ish. Now realize here that you have two separate equations. You have y plus 4 equals 2.2, .2, 
and you have y plus 4 equals negative 2.2. When you go to subtract the 4 from both sides of each equation, you're going to get 2.2 minus 4 is about negative 1.8. And then on the other equation, when you take negative 2.2 minus 4, you're going to get negative 6.2. Notice that you get two very different or unique values. This is different than when it's centered at the origin, because here you're going to get um, the same value, right? Like plus or minus the same number, but when it's not centered at the origin, you have two very unique or distinct values. So we got negative 1.8 or we got negative 6.2. And as I go to plot those, I'm going to go to the right one and down 1.8. It's about right there. And then I'm going to go down 6.2. And again, because of the symmetry here of a circle, I can plot one on the other side, plot the matching mirror image point on the other side. And you can see now, when we go to connect it, there's our circle, right? Here's my circle. Again, if you want to, you can plug in other values. You can get more points on your circle. Um, but at the minimum, we need those eight points. So let's have you try just a couple of practice problems on circles. Um, I'd like you to go ahead and just pause the video right here and see if you can work on these four practice problems. So go ahead and pause the video and try these four. Okay, so for the first one, um, this is just plugging the numbers into our circle um, equation. So negative 5 is h and negative 6 is k. When you plug those in, x minus a negative 5 becomes x plus 5. And then when you plug in the um, k value, y minus a negative 6, well, minus a negative 6 becomes plus 6 squared equals 81. Again, the radius squared is on the other side. In number 2, the difference here is that when they give you the center, you have to first use your distance formula, which is what I did over here, and found my radius is 5. So using my radius of 5, and then using that point 2, negative 4, my center point, that's my hk, I came up with that equation, x minus 2 squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 25. Number three, you're graphing with a circle centered at the origin. So again, I can plot my center point. My radius is 2, the square root of 4. So I go 2 to the right, 2 to the left, 2 up, 2 down. And then I need another point on my circle. Really, your only options here are to plug in either 1 or negative 1. I chose 1. When I plug that in, I got plus or minus 1.7. So I went up 1.7 down 1.7, and then plotted the mirror image points on the other side, connected, and I have my circle. Again, the more challenging one here is number four. Let me scroll down, sorry guys. Um, so here we have a circle centered at two, negative four. Plot that first. Your radius is four, so go to the right four, left four, up four, down four. And then you want to find another um, four points on your graph. You could either plug in, my thought was maybe plug in one or zero or negative one. You could even plug in three or four or five just to get another point here on this circle. So if you plugged in one, as an example, you would get negative 0.13, which is really close to the axis, and then negative 7.87. Or if you plugged in zero, you'd have negative 0.54 and negative 7.46. Again, either way you'd plot your mirror image points and connect. You might want to even pause the video here and just kind of check out my work here of how I'm solving for that other point. The math or the algebra involved here is a little bit more involved. Um, so go ahead and check this out. Check your answer. So your homework for tonight is um, from your packet, page 40 through 42, you're going to be working on numbers 10 through 26, sorry there, 10 through 26, and then also numbers 30 through 32. Again, they're not all as involved as that last problem, but you will see problems like that on your assessment, so I want to make sure you understand how you're coming up with those additional points on your circle. So again, 10 through 26 and 30 through 32, check your stamp sheet, that's your homework. Um, I think that's it for our lesson for today, so um, good luck.